Dr. Darvish here at Holistic Naturopathic Medical Center. I hope everybody's doing well. You're enjoying the sunshine here in the great Northwest and you're feeling happy and vibrant. Uh, if you're not, that's what we're talking about today. We are talking about fatigue and uh, Dr. Marion will be joining me hopefully soon. You know, we are in the middle of our work day here as many of you are as well. And so we are um, often seeing patients and uh, trying to squeeze this little session of live in between our patients. So please do excuse us for any technical issues that may come up, but um, hopefully it'll still be a fruitful discussion today. So I'm hoping that people will start asking me some questions about fatigue and why are we always tired? One of the things that I, look, uh, I like to look at is uh, fatigue being a, really a sign of what the immune system is doing. And the whole focus is really about getting the immune system activated. And when we see that the immune system is burdened, then that's when we see fatigue. We also see fatigue ultimately because our spirit, our soul, is having a hard time communicating through our body. And um, at the end of the day, this means that this is all about relationships, right? The relationships we have with each other, with our environment, with bugs, with our hormones, with ourselves, with God, with the creator, with plants. I mean, you can go on and on and on about the number of relationships that we actually on a daily basis have and uh, how our system tries to create a, a healthy organization here in this body so that it can communicate, it can have a, a positive and healthy relationship. So when our mood, our um, energy is weakened, it will affect our immune response. And the key is really to get the immune response to a place where we can... Um, just a minute here, I'm gonna have Dr. Marion join. So the immune system needs to be activated, needs to be able to address all of the stuff that's going on. Hi, hello, Dr. Marion. Let me bring you on Facebook as well here. Hello, Thank you, Thank you. Nice to see you again. Hope you have Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, you too. So we're talking, I'm talking a little bit about fatigue and how um, really, our energy is a way of us being able to communicate within relationships and for us to have a more um, lively and healthy relationship, not only with other people, but with the environment and community um, and um, the creator, whatever you're working with on a minute by minute basis. And so, when our emotions are uh, physical, is burdened, then it creates kind of like a block for us to be able to, to express ourselves in the relationships with others. So to me, everything comes down to relationships. So how do we create a being, a body that is uh, full of vitality and full of energy to be able to communicate and relate to all the different aspects of our life? So it really comes down partially to the immune system, right? So um, if you think about the immune system, it is bombarded with hormones, activating it or disactivating it. It is uh, dealing with foods that may be part of that. Uh, it is dealing with the nervous system. I mean, the list that we look at, the toxins that we look at, the deficiencies that we look at, the infections that we look at, uh, the emotional stuff that we are often looking at as physicians, all of these and more impact how the immune system will function and is functioning and ultimately uh, how your energy is. And then beyond that, how you respond to the environment and the people around you. So that is what we're, what I think we need to focus in um, with uh, in terms of fatigue. It's what's bombarding the immune system. What do you think, Doc? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think fatigue is definitely a term that we use that can mean a lot of different things. And depending on what people are referring to, that can give us clues as to what might be affecting it. Um, but I agree with your perspective. I think that there's uh, physical forms of fatigue, there's mental forms of fatigue, there's emotional fatigue, spiritual fatigue. Um, and each of those can definitely come along with each other, but if it's um, primarily one more than the other, then there's different reasons for that. So yeah, we might get yeah. into that today. So I think I think you and I both are very passionate about the immune system, <laughs> <laughs> right? And yes. uh, we look at the immune system. Oftentimes, when we're running blood tests, we're running inflammatory mar markers that are looking at something called cytokines. And most of you may have heard the term cytokine storm with what's going on recently um, but many of us maybe don't know what cytokines are and what cytokine storm is but cytokines are little proteins that are in our body that kind of modulate the immune system they tell the immune system to go this way or that way to um, kind of pick up its army to fight an invader um, and uh, depending on the type of cytokines, we can either promote more inflammation, which will get us more tired, or we can promote and more of an anti-inflammatory response, which is more uh, rejuvenating in a sense. And so when we come across invaders, and invaders could be infections, could be foods, could be environmental allergens, then these, um, these cytokines, then the inflammatory cytokines are activated and then they produce more inflammation in our body and then it exhausts us. So one of the ones that we often work with uh, or one of the conditions we often work with is chronic infections like mold, like Lyme disease, like tick-borne infections and parasites and so forth. Would you like to get into some of that, Dr. Marion? Sure. Um, so what we're discussing are basically um, the causes of biotoxins in the body. And everybody can have different susceptibility to biotoxins. Some people might be just fine. And that's so that's why there might be one person living in a moldy home that really has no health issues whatsoever, whereas another person might have very severe and debilitating fatigue. Um, they might have even an autoimmune disease triggered. They might have mental or emotional issues like depression. Um, and all of that has to do with genetic susceptibility. And some people have something called an HLA genotype um, that is more susceptible to being um, more significantly affected by biotoxins than other people. Um, but then what happens is that the biotoxins behave in the body differently depending on, I think Instagram might be frozen, by the way. Um, Dr. D, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. The Instagram is, my Instagram, at least your screen's a little bit blurry, but. Okay, well, um, mine's still working with you talking, so. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, Dr. Darvish and myself both um, specialize um, and have a, a strong interest in some of these chronic infections because we find that these are commonly the cause of um, people's um, debilitating fatigue, joint pain, and other issues. Um, chronic fatigue particularly um, can be associated with certain chronic infections and environmental toxins like mold um, and heavy metals. Um, so we were talking about the biotoxins and why some people might be affected more than others. Um, and what then happens is that the biotoxins may be distributed in different places in the body at different amounts. So some biotoxins are gonna be more um, directed towards the nerves and others towards fat cells, including the brain um, and other towards the joints and so forth. Um, and then that can interrupt as well the flow of information between the hypothalamus as well as um, the rest of the organs in the body, primarily the adrenals, and that can lead to dysregulation of blood sugar, abnormal stress response, um, as well as an inability to control inflammation. Um, this is really a pretty big topic, um, but um, just in summary, Lyme disease and some of these other types of chronic infections can um, are known as the great imitator and tend to imitate a lot of common conditions like that we see, like chronic fatigue. 
Yeah, great. So, you know, most people go to a doctor and they're they're going in mainly because they're tired. It's a very, very common symptom to have, right? And you go to a doctor and they run a bunch of tests. They're looking at your thyroid because that is one of the big causes for fatigue. Anemia, low iron levels, low blood uh, B12 levels can also be another cause of fatigue because at the end of the day, we are looking to see if the cellular engine is working well. Your cell engine called the mitochondria is what makes energy. It goes through something called the Krebs cycle biochemically and produces these energy molecules we call ATP. Well, different things can impact that cellular uh, mechanism or engine. And one of the things that uh, we've been mentioning is these biotoxins or chronic infections. And so when you go to a doctor and they run your blood tests, they look for the thyroid, the anemia, iron levels, and and say, well, I have no idea why you're fatigued. It's all in your head. Go figure it out. Well, we tend to look at it a little bit more um, systemically and systematically, right? And um, from the cellular level, from the emotional level, from the energetic perspective, from the hormonal perspective, uh, from the nervous system and so forth. So we're looking at it quite um comprehensively to see what's causing your fatigue. Like Dr. Marion was saying, some of these infections can cause a blockage to the cellular function, to that cell engine. It can slow it down. It can even damage it. It can burn up some of the nutrients that you may be needing for that cellular engine, like CoQ10, which is a really common uh, nutrient that most of you have heard about. So, what our goal is, is to identify what are all the different things that are invading or blocking that cell function from producing its energy. And so we tend to use uh, autonomic response testing. We tend to use computer testing. We use thermography, thermometry, temperature tests, uh, heart rate variability testing, uh, various different, both computer and energetic testing along with the blood work and urine tests and so forth to identify what's weakening the cellular uh, system and, and perhaps the mitochondria from working more effectively. Because if we can get the cellular engine to work, guess what? You're going to be able to ride around your car, right? But if that engine is not working, it's going to be in, in the driveway um, and you can't move it even though it's got gas in it. You just can't move it because the engine's not broken or it's dysfunctional. So, um, so the mitochondria becomes really, really important in our energy production. And oftentimes that's missed with the conventional um, testing and evaluation. Anything come to your mind about any of that, Doc? Yeah, um, uh, I love the mitochondria, actually. That's my favorite organelle. Um, but you can think about an engine creates a lot of combustion. So there's an exhaust pipe on all cars. Um, you can hear and sometimes even smell the exhaust coming from most engines. Um, and the mitochondria do a similar process. They are actually combusting in order to perform or to produce energy. And so that is creating oxidative stress. So the mitochondria are inherently more, most susceptible to becoming affected by oxidative stress. Um, over time, just by the very process of aging. But then when you add in environmental toxins or infections or other um, producers of oxidative stress, the mitochondria become then more exacerbated. Um, and so that's definitely something that we look at when we're in discussing chronic fatigue or fatigue in general, because if you don't have the mitochondria to produce adenosine triphosphate, which is ATP, you're not gonna have the cellular energy that any cell needs to do any of its functions. So you mentioned oxidative stress. I just wanna make sure everybody's on board about what oxidative stress is. <laughs> the way I look at it is fire. Fire is really good, right? It warms us up and you can cook with it. Um, it does a lot of good for us. But along with that, fire comes this ash, right? And that 
ash is very toxic. In fact, many of you know that barbecuing food can be very, very poisonous because of the amount of ash it's producing. Are you dripping your car? Your yeah. water? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, so you produce a lot of uh, ash, which can be very damaging to your cells. And that's what oxidative stress is. It's the ash that's produced by the fire. Now, in our body, we constantly have this balance between the oxidative stress and the fire that's being produced. You know, every time you're drinking water, eating, um, exercising, thinking, you know, crying, I mean, it could be anything. We are producing fire. We're using energy that is um, getting the, the fire going. And along with that, the oxidative stress. So with the ash that's produced, is our body able to maintain that at a balanced level with the fire? Or is there too much ash being produced? Or is the body not cleaning up the ash uh, sufficiently? Uh, and therefore causing more damage to our cellular engine. And so this is one of the reasons why fresh fruits and vegetables is so important because it's our antioxidant um, that we use. It's our sweep that we, you know, sweeper, that the broom that sweeps up all of the ash. And so uh, one of the things that we want to look at is vitamin C levels, vitamin E levels, A, D, um, some of the CoQ10 we looked at, um, some of these nutrients that will help clean up the ash. And along with that is bioflavonoids, which is the colorful part of most vegetables and fruit. And if we can get more color into your diet, you've got more bioflavonoids, more antioxidants to clean up the toxicity in our cells. Would you like to talk about that a little bit more, Doc? Sure. Um, so, yeah, the balance between antioxidant and oxidant stress is um, it's a, a constantly ongoing process that our body uses to um, maintain homeostasis, which just means balance in the body. And some of the things that might contribute to oxidative stress are everything from just being out in the world where there's pollution to even emotional stress will create oxidative stress in the body. Um, and then again, infections as well as diet can be a big um, contributor to increasing oxidative stress in the body and actually exercise. Um, so whenever we're exercising, we are creating um, oxidative stress and the, the benefit from exercise definitely outweighs the oxidative stress produced. But when you think about marathon athletes or um, athletes that are exercising all day, such as skiing or those types of things, you're producing a lot of oxidative um, stress throughout the day. And so you want to make sure that you balance that with, um, with antioxidants. And the best source of that is fruits and vegetables because you're going to be eating anyway. So why not get that in with the diet? But sometimes we'll supplement with um, something called glutathione, which is our master antioxidant, either in the um, orally or intravenously, um, especially for athletes that can be really beneficial, um, as well as vitamin C, um, A, D, E, K, some of those other nutrients that we might add in in order to kind of support the antioxidant balance. Um, what also can be beneficial with um, respect to balancing oxidative and antioxidant stress in the body is um, ozone, which we will do intravenously and sometimes topically to various areas, but um, intravenously it will stimulate the, the mitochondria and also um, while it is short-term oxidative actually lead to a more robust antioxidant oxidant balance long term um, and I know that like I'm not as great with the metaphor so I don't know the fire and the ash but um, at the end of the day we're trying to just keep balance in the body and um, make sure that we're not adding too much ash to the system and so some of these nutrients like glutathione and treatments like ozone IVs can be helpful in that respect. Yeah, and ozone, actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because ozone does increase our own endogenous or our internal production of glutathione, especially in the liver, which in itself is cleaning up the toxicity that or the fire, the ash that the fire is making by giving the body more oxygen to uh, address some of these issues. You know, the other one that we often look at is adrenal health, right? adrenals and hormones because 
when you're under a lot of stress physically, mentally, emotionally, you're burning through your cortisol level, some of your hormones like DHEA and progesterone and pregnenolone, all of these hormones that we use that are acting as protective hormones uh, to support our system during these stressful times. And they are involved again with modulating inflammation, modulating the immune system. So here we go back again to regulating the immune system from different aspects. The one interesting thing is that most doctors may not pay attention to is the adrenals. When you have, let's say you do a, a cortisol test, salivary cortisol or a urinary cortisol test, and you find that your cortisol level is low flat lines. And most, uh, most doctors, the first thought is let's boost up the, the cortisol level um, to give you some energy. The problem with thinking just that way is because uh, cortisol is very immunosuppressive. In other words, it suppresses the immune system. And so when you push the cortisol back up, you're actually limiting the body's capacity in fighting the infections that may be hidden, that may be quiet. And one of these sessions, we'll talk about these stealth infections or these hidden infections that oftentimes we may not be aware of, but they're creating this chronic fatigue within our system along with a bunch of other um, issues. So cortisol um, is not always needed to be stimulated when it's flat. We actually sometimes need to go back to look at what's causing the cortisol to be suppressed. Are there any infections? Is this an immune uh, modulating response the body's having? And uh, look at it from that perspective as well, and not just let's kick, kick the immune system or the cortisol up to give you energy. So we like to look at things more at the root cause versus just treating the symptoms that may show up on laboratory testing. Let's figure out what's causing it. And like you, like you alluded to, Dr. Marion, is emotions play a big role, right? Um, many of us may wake up tired in the mornings. Oftentimes, that's a sign to me that there is an emotional burden that you've been carrying that you may not even be aware of. It may be something that uh, happened maybe even 10 years ago, but recently there has been a reminder of that subconsciously or unconsciously, and it's playing uh, a role in, during your sleep. And so you're not sleeping deep enough because your nervous system, your emotions are too busy trying to attend or to resolve those uh, unresolved emotions. And um, therefore, it's also very important to look at the emotions as a source of your fatigue. Again, it goes back to relationships, right? Again, to relationships. Are we having relationships with ourselves, with the, um, the uh, supreme power, with people around us, with our coworkers, with our kids, with our spouses, parents? Um, what's going on there? What do we feel is unresolved? What do you feel that you feel helpless in and, and powerless in. And let's look at those and see if we can resolve some of those heavy emotions. Hi, Steph, by the way, nice to see you on uh, Instagram. So, uh, so the emotions play a big role with fatigue and oftentimes we forget how involved that is. And it's our blind spot, right? And uh, we can't always look at our own blind spot. We need a third party to look into that. We need a third party to show us, hey, what's what's blocking your cellular function? What's blocking that mitochondria from working? It's amazing, actually, when we clear some of the emotional burdens, how the cell engine starts working. So it's not just about giving the cells the right nutrients. Of course, that's important. It's important to make sure you're eating well, you're um, you're drinking clean water, you're exercising, getting fresh oxygen in, you're sleeping on time and doing all of these self-care things. But that's not often the only um, way to help clear out the fatigue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that having a third party is definitely important sometimes um, because we're not always conscious of um, an emotional pattern that we might be stuck in or that might be affecting us. And 
Um, sometimes energetic testing like autonomic response testing reveals something that maybe you haven't thought about in a while that might be um, sort of in your system as um, emotional or energetic memory. And you know, the other one is uh, body work. So the musculoskeletal system, we cannot forget that it plays a big role. Initially, when I started practicing medicine, I was doing a lot of spinal manipulations and cranial work. Now I've passed that down to um, other doctors within the office, but the spine is, is really very, very important. And that's why the chiropractors, the osteopathic physicians play a big role, as well as naturopathic physicians who specialize in uh, musculoskeletal uh, work. But uh, the nervous system comes out of the spine. And so if the, the spine is out of alignment, it can impinge uh, the nerves. And then the nerves are not activating the cells or the organs and the biochemical response that's needed for energy production. So looking at the spine, looking at the cranium, you know, so many people have concussions or have had concussions in um, their teens or as a child. And it's kind of put up to the side and it's like, oh, I had that concussion 40 years ago. It doesn't play a role in my fatigue, but it truly does. It plays a big role mm -hmm. with, uh, with energy production and the nervous system and the signaling and the inflammation that goes on in the brain and um, the activation it has with, with our uh, organs and cells. So looking at the whole system again becomes very, very important. What can we do? So let's say we figure out that, okay, we've got infections, we've got adrenal or hormonal imbalances, we've got cranial subluxations and, and uh, spinal misalignments and, and uh, nutrient deficiencies and so forth. What do you think we should do, Doc? Where do we start? Because I think that's a big question for a lot of people. Yeah. So, I mean, you start with the thing that is the most um, dysregulated, I would say. Um, sometimes we'll use various forms of testing to kind of um, find out what system needs to shift. Um, often there's a root underlying cause or two to three causes that if you are able to shift those, a lot of those other things will fall into balance. For example, um, if the gastrointestinal system is compromised and you are not breaking down food and or absorbing the nutrients that you need, um, we may supplement with B12 and vitamin D and different um, nutrients along the way, but we will likely start to heal the gut in order to um, allow people to absorb their, their food naturally. Um, other times we might do all of it because we really need this person to get well, um, get better soon. And so we may prescribe or do ourselves structural adjustments along with um, nutrient replenishment along with emotional work, along with thyroid, et cetera, and um, balancing. Um, it just kind of depends on the person. I think it's one of the beauties of naturopathic medicine is that we personalize the approach. So there isn't really a protocol for fatigue. And especially at this office, we um, create unique treatment plans depending on the person's particular um, symptoms and genetic makeup and susceptibilities and so forth. So it's pretty tailored to what's going to help that per that particular person feel better as fast as possible. And I think you said it right on the dot there is that it's personalized. Uh, each one of us, we may come in here with fatigue. Two people may come in with fatigue and one patient, one client may have such deep emotional uh, burden that they're carrying from childhood or from a recent relationship. And another one may be dealing with nutritional deficiency and malabsorption secondary to mold toxicity in the environment. And so both of them come in with a very similar fatigue, but two people get two different, both of them get different individualized treatments because we are special, right? We're unique. And I think, like you said, we, we the, um, the patients, the clients, we each have to recognize that we are unique and we are special and uh, that you get to be special when you come into this office. You get to be um, looked at and listened to like you really need to be listened to and recognize that you are a, an amazing individual with qualities that are beautiful and uh, you have the capacity to do so much to be agents of transformation for all of us. 
and you are, you have the capacity to heal others, to heal yourself as we help you and you help us heal. So it's really a two-way relationship again that we are looking at when it comes to figuring out what's going on with your fatigue. You know, once, um, one suggestion I have for everybody out there is that do get on a good diet um, that you think might be good for you, healthy at least, uh, for now, get, get to bed, get rid of the electromagnetic fields and cell phones an hour or two before bed. Some of all of this stuff that we've discussed over and over again throughout many of these videos. But ultimately, if you're sick, if you're not feeling good, it is really important to go seek a physician who is not only knowledgeable in the science of medicine, but who's divinely enlightened. And why that is so important is because the source of all healing is through a power beyond us, beyond us as physicians, beyond you. And oftentimes we need, even us as physicians, we need somebody who can channel that uh, power through, through them into the patient, along with looking at the medical and the physical aspects of the person. For instance, if you cut your finger, you know, you can sit there and pray all you want. That bleeding is not going to stop until you do something about it, right? Um, and so you do need the physical uh, address, but at the same time, if you're just focusing on the physical and you miss the emotional and the spiritual aspect of your well-being, then the body's not going to overcome that fatigue. It is so, so important to seek a physician who has both capacities or who has been practicing them within themselves to uh, be able to help you. I always, you know, with my uh, resident doctors and students that come through here, I always um, encourage them to create a wellness plan for themselves, to seek um, other providers to help them heal. Because if, if I'm on the ground, and my patient comes in and they're on the ground, how can I possibly pick that patient up? I have to be standing. I have to be at least one step physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually ahead of my patient to be able to hold their hand and get them off the floor, right? So, so you have to find my, my suggestion and, and recommendation to everyone who's listening to this is to seek out a provider who has the capacity to address you from the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual to help guide you to what you need in order to um, create your well-being and healing within your system. So with that, Dr. Marion, do you have any final words? I know we are getting close to our little uh, 30 minutes or maybe even past our 30 minute block here. Um, no, I mean, I love the metaphor of um, you have to put your own oxygen mask on before you help someone else on the plane. Yeah. And that's, that's what we should be remembering as physicians. So um, I would agree with what and you And caretakers, you know, yeah. caregivers. Because right now yeah. there's yeah. Uh, many of us um, in the community, in the world out here that are becoming caretakers for people who have been sick because of all the, the stuff that's been going on. And, um, and so we have to take care of ourselves to be able to take care of everybody else. So if there are no questions or any other questions, I would um, again, thank you so much for joining Dr. Marion and I today. And hopefully this uh, was something fruitful for you in some aspect. Please do seek your own provider um, if you're um, not wanting to come here, that's fine, but do seek a provider to um, look at and evaluate the causes of fatigue for you from a comprehensive place. And anything we say here on these videos is meant for um, informational purposes. So thank you so much for being with us. And we look forward to seeing you next time, next Thursday at noon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>